So our primary emotions are hardwired in the parts of our brain that are the most ancient from like a neuroevolutionary perspective, like midbrain, limbic system, hypothalamus. Unlike the emotions, our conscious thoughts are embedded in the most recent parts of the brain, namely like the neocortex. And our primary emotions can be divided into three categories. We have the caring system, the drive excitement system, and the threat protection system. Welcome. Stick around if you want to learn about the art and philosophy of beautiful movement mixed with evidence-based exercise science. We will be having tough and inspiring conversations with other coaches, experts, artists, and athletes. Our goal is to challenge myths, explore concepts, and engage in healthy debate as we dive deep with intrigue and curiosity. I'm your host, Hannah Deutscher. I've been teaching dance, Pilates, and yoga for over two decades. And what I've learned is that movement can be the joy that integrates us all together. When we can trust and express ourselves through our bodies, we are unlimited in our ability to change ourselves and our communities for the better. We, as movement teachers and coaches, have the power to help people experience this for themselves. Okay, everyone, let's dive in. Exchanging ideas and changing people's lives one session at a time. This is the Pilates Exchange. Welcome back to the Pilates Exchange, everyone. Thank you for joining me again. I have been on a little bit of a sabbatical. I talked about it in the last episode that I wanted to go take some time for myself and just sort of go a little bit deeper and see what I need, what do I want, where am I going on many, many different levels, personal levels, the business, uh, looking future thinking. So it's been a really good time last couple couple months and a hard time. So we're going to be chatting a little bit about that and what we're going to be doing also in the future. So let me just back up and say, yeah, how is this, How where it brought me to that spot? Let's start there. Because I think you will definitely, all listeners out there, relate to this, especially if you are teaching a lot. If you have a studio or not have a studio, I think we all just, we come to these places in our lives where you are, you're doing the thing, you got a lot of stuff going on. And the stuff just keeps on piling up. You have your to-do list and it is just like you scratch one thing off and there's 10 things that come on right afterwards. And it's an overwhelming feeling of like, not only how am I going to get this done, but like even why am I doing this? You know? And so I was, I was hitting that for a while. I was right at the end of like, oh, okay. I need time for me. I need time to to refocus. I need time to I don't know, set my priorities straight again. And I think it's a good it's a good thing to when you get to that point because I think there's a lot of great opportunity in there. So I'm I'm grateful that that had happened. So last time we saw or we heard each other was I was just getting getting ready to go take a visit to my family because I I don't know how many of you know this. I live I live in Germany. My family lives in the States. So I don't unfortunately get to see them as often as I would like. It's always a it's always a big thing to like leave the business behind and then go over there and we have a cultural difference that's hard to navigate sometimes also just putting down the studio owner hat the teaching hat just to give myself space for that is hard for me i've got to be honest like my brain is always working is always thinking is always coming up with the next thing it is hard for me to shut that down so this time around chris was so lovely enough to stay in the studio and keep that running and i took the time to go visit my family on my own and take a little bit of time for myself just to to again to refocus so i would like to talk about some of the things that came up there i decided and we decided that we were going to implement some big changes Okay, all around, like every aspect of, <laughs> of life. If any of you know me personally, you know that I'm a woman of extremes, right? So unfortunately, I can't just do one thing a little bit. I do everything a lot. I um, mean, maybe it's a character flaw. I don't know. So when we got back, I or when I got back, we decided to restructure some of the our 
studio, our business here in Nuremberg, that meant redoing everything that we were doing with our memberships here, repricing it, redoing the website, also taking a look at our signature program, our train the trainers, going really deep into that. What do we want to keep? What do we need to update? How are we going to change it? And there's going to be a launch of that again coming up soon. We're super excited about that. But that needed some deep work. We are restructuring. We're now in the process of doing this of taking our independent contractors, some of our teachers over to full-time contracts onto our studio so that we can take care of retirement and health leave, you know, different insurances that we have here in in Germany, make sure that they are taken care of and they can make a solid living from teaching with us, which is also a big restructure because that means going back to looking everything financially that we had done and making sure that is that it's going to work for them and work for us. And then the other big thing that that is for change is that I've decided to take more time for myself. Now that's probably of all of those changes, that's probably the hardest one, which is crazy because this is what I this is what I do for a living is I help people carve space out for themselves through Pilates or yoga or whatever whatever it is. And somehow I struggle the most with taking care or taking time for myself. So that's where I've been investing, investing the deep work. And for me that right now, that looks like carving out small little places in the day where I can do my 30 minute movement practice, whatever that may be. Sometimes it's just that I need some time to go read a book. Sometimes it is me just going for a walk in the city, no husband, no dog with me, (laughs) just like putting on my headphones and trying to zone out for a bit. It looks all sorts of different ways. And it's been really healthy but it's been hard. It's easy to think about changes. It's hard to implement lasting changes. And that brought me to thinking about like all of our, all of our new clients that come in to our studio or to the, wherever we meet them along their path, you know, whether it's online or here, and they're also looking for a change. And so what is change really? What are we talking about when we are trying to think about what do we want to achieve? How are we going to do it? You know, we have already, we know about the SMART goals and all of that, but there's, there's a psychological process behind this that I find really, really fascinating. If when I'm quiet enough to listen into that, that kind of stuff. And I also want to say change is scary, man. Like, especially all those changes at the same time. Oh, I even forgot another thing that that we decided to change is our online teacher training program. So not just train the trainers, but we're going to be launching our bar teacher training also coming up soon. I mean, it's just so many things and so many changes because this is a different way that we are, that we're going to be doing it. So it's exciting and it's scary as all heck. I was chatting with a friend of mine, Neha I will link to her. Actually, she has a lovely podcast. I'll link to that in our show notes. But she's an organizational psychologist. And we're just chatting about change on like on a business level. And she was reminding me that it's not just about what's happening in the business, but it's there's a big psychological component to that. So she pulled out a few studies and articles to share with me just so that I could navigate this for myself. And I thought that I would be sharing them with you. And this is exactly how we're going to start our first one back to the new season, because I just think it's really good, real good, important information. Some of this is a little bit (laughs) dry-ish. Well, we'll we'll try to make it as juicy as possible. So I'm going to read you some things and let's then think about it. How, How does it apply to us? So this is about now the model of the three affect regulation systems by Paul Gilbert. And this was done in 2007. And basically what he's saying is our biosocial goals and motivations, such as status, attachment, sex, and achievement are all guided by emotions. So emotions inform us what our needs are, which need is the most pressing at any given moment, and then how successful are we in catering in those? So are we making change for status? 
attachment? How about that achievement? That's all coming from like, how are we feeling? So our primary emotions are hardwired in the parts of our brain that are the most ancient from like a neuroevolutionary perspective, like midbrain, limbic system, hypothalamus. Unlike the emotions, our conscious thoughts are embedded in the most recent parts of the brain, namely like the neocortex. And our primary emotions can be divided into three categories. We have the caring system, the drive excitement system, and the threat protection system. So let's go back up to the caring system. That regulates our needs to feel accepted, feel important to others, and that they're going to take care of us. It also regulates our need to take care of others. Like, for example, how we take care of children. And in our case, in this, in our professions, how we're taking care of others through our teaching. This system is mostly involved in like creating the bonds with other people and the sense of connectedness with them. So the caring system is also involved in making sure that we act accordingly and certain norms in order to feel connected. Like if it's in the family or the studio or just general society. And so in this, it also creates a little bit of fear if we feel like we're going to be rejected, like this is not how we do things here or whatever sort of society or studio norms are are built up about that. So if you feel like that would be rejected, that gets a little bit scary. When I started teaching, I felt underprepared and overwhelmed. I needed to learn how to plan my training so that it made sense, but I wasn't sure what was working and what wasn't. So many teacher training programs leave out the actual art and business of teaching. This is why we created Train the Trainers. Train the Trainers is designed to give you the tools you need to create a powerful learning environment for your students. Gain access to the vault of our collected knowledge where you can learn everything we have to teach you, whether you are a freelance teacher or a studio owner. Get constructive feedback on your teaching with actionable tools you can apply immediately. We can't wait to be part of your teaching journey and to help you grow in your business. Welcome to Train the Trainers. Then we have the emotions, primary emotions of the drive excitement system. And this is the one that drives exploration, curiosity, achievement. What do we want to accomplish and create when we're not driven by fear? right? This is goal-directed behavior and can be either like a threat protection system, so like protecting from harm, or the drive excitement system, so you're creating something. So they might look similar from the outside, but those are connected by different emotions. I'm sure you, I'm sure you got that one. I find myself in the drive excitement system quite a lot, the creation of things. I love creating things new. I love being part of that emotional system, that newness, that, that, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that is, but that is really exciting to me. And then we have our last primary emotion, the threat protection system. And this one activates safety seeking behaviors, threat avoidance, and self-protection. This system makes us experience anxiety and fear. It drives us to avoid specific situations and react aggressively towards certain stimuli. Okay. Now this threat protection system is where before I took my break, I found myself a little bit more in there than I had wanted. (laughs) Like my anxiety was high. I felt like I was running from one thing to another, just putting out fires, like not real fires, but but fires within the business from little problems that kept on arising. And it just got bigger and bigger and bigger in my brain. And I noticed that my normal equilibrium was constantly swinging out of balance. So this threat protection system is optimized for creating safety but not happiness really. It's just, it's a safety, like just get it done. It is a threat avoidance, try to protect yourself. And that's why like when we're operating in that one, it has a huge impact. As soon as it's activated, it blocks all the other systems as well as our rational thoughts. And this one, this threat protection system, if I understand it correct, and if I definitely feel it, but if I understand it correct, is associated with the development of survival strategies, right? So this is like, we feel this emotional, this emotion, 
these threats, this anxiety, this fear. And then it says, okay, how are we going to survive this? And now when we talk about the survival thing of this is survival, our brains are optimized for survival, but not for happiness. Like that, that's just sort of a real unfortunate thing. We have to work for those happiness sometimes. The threat system is the oldest biological system in evolution. Most creatures have it. It's like this safety seeking behavior, the aversion of threats, self-protection. Negativity bias is a way to help us survive, right? So it places maybe a little bit more emphasis on, not a, not a little bit, but like a far greater significance on negative events, emotions, or information so that we can avoid them in the future. So it's like a big red, you know, a big red flag that's always there. So avoid this, avoid that. And it's for our survival or prior survival. I, I'm sure that things have changed, right? Like when we're talking about the, if you're a studio owner, you know, it's not like we're not going to survive studio owning. And it's not that it's not a life or death situation in our businesses, but sometimes it feels like that. It, it has the way of being bigger, bigger, bigger into this huge thing. And then we, we go into those, those negative thoughts, right? Because a threat doesn't have to be like someone's about ready to punch you. It could be a theoretical threat to your livelihood. It could be a theoretical threat to say that caring system that we were talking about, the primary emotion, where where if you feel like you're, say, if you were to make a change and that caring system, so how we are in our business, if, if you were afraid that your clients were going to be angry with whatever change you're going to implement, that is a threat for us. It makes us feel uncomfortable. And I don't think that our brains like this, like deep, deep, let's say archaic way that our brains work, I don't think it has the ability to distinguish these like these subtleties, right? Because we're we're hardwired to resist change. If we found a way of doing something, then then our brains say, okay, we're good. We know how to do this. Just keep going. It's the safe way to doing things. Change is sometimes it change is scary. So then why would we go into change? And why the heck did I do so many changes at the same time? (sighs) Great question. I ask myself that. (laughs) Actually, I don't ask myself that. Chris is always like, what are we doing and why? (laughs) For me, over the last quarter or maybe two quarters, this change has been building up for a while. The systems that were in place were not making me happy. And I do think that we need to be consciously pursuing happiness, not just the safety part of it. I think we need to look for why are we doing this? How can we do it better? And I'm not talking studio or teaching, which those are also important, but I'm talking life. I want to lean into just enjoying every little moment that we have right now, because I like the world right now with all the different events that's happening worldwide, it feels too much. It feels, it feels so completely overwhelming. And that's where I need to go back into me about the way that I process the world is through my body. That's the only thing I got, right? I got my, my thoughts, my emotions, and my body, and it's through my through my body that I could understand those thoughts and those emotions. And just taking things one step so right now, sometimes it's just one breath at a time, one moment at a time. And that is why I decided to make all these changes in there. Because I realized that if I didn't, I was working through a status quo of things. It was good. It was good enough, but not not great. It wasn't yet at a place where I can say I am, that I'm truly happy in the way things were set up. So that's why we went back to the drawing board and we decided, okay, let's, let's implement these changes. And in that is also rethinking what I would like to do with this podcast. So I took a little bit longer hiatus than I was intending to do. I'm sure that you've noticed it if you were a regular listener before. 
What I've realized through my conversations with the other guests that I've had on the podcast um, and from with you guys, because I actually have uh, some teachers that I mentor and from train the trainers, all, all sorts of people that are, that have been listening and shared their quite personal thoughts with me. And what I realized is that I would love to go, I would love to take this podcast into all of these things, the deep work, we'll call it, maybe we should rename it (laughs) the deep work because it's not just about how to teach better, right? It's about questioning the things, the way we have been doing things. It's about you, the listener, taking what you need and leaving the rest of it. I'm not going to, like we, you know, we like to do the sciencey aspects here. That's great. Yep. That's a lot of fun. We like to talk about tradition, Pilates tradition, classical Pilates, contemporary Pilates, neoclassical. I don't know, like all of those things. Like, and that's important too, but it's not the good, deep, juicy work. This is the type of thing. Like, I want you to think about like, you're sitting with your oldest friend in the world and you are philosophizing about why things are and what do we want to do? You know, we all have these great ideas. If I were just, if I were president or if I were this, if we could just make these changes, it would, it would save everything. Then we'd be peace. That's the type of stuff that I would like to be doing. How can we go deep enough with our own thoughts, our own questioning that we change the face of teaching in general for you? your teaching, your most authentic way, because your way is going to be different than my way. And that's great. So those are my deep thoughts for the day. (laughs) We have coming up some really, really incredible guests. I've been recording podcasts with our guests over the last few, actually couple months already, doing exactly this deep work with them. It's been fun. It's been frustrating. It's been eye-opening. It's a lot of stuff. So I really hope that you go on this journey with me. It is about Pilates and it's not, you know, it's Pilates is part of a one thing that I love to teach, but more important, I love to teach bodies. I love to be with bodies moving in space. That is my deepest love and passion when we can unlock that unlimited potential for people. And so I know that we can all agree that if you're listening to this, that that's what you love as well. So why don't you join me on this journey together? I'm looking forward to hearing from you either send me an email, send me a DM on Insta, wherever, however you want to get a hold of me. I'd really appreciate it. Happy teaching everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. A great cost-free way of supporting us and the podcast would be to give us a five-star rating. You can also look down into the show notes and grab any one of the free resources for teachers. I hope to see you next week on the Pilates Exchange. Happy teaching, everyone.